Welcome to the Indian Film Festival of Cincinnati. Um, we are now in our second virtual edition, and this is the sixth annual festival. This year, we have 60 independent films made in 2020 and 2021 in the features, the documentary, and the shorts categories. The films cover over 15 languages. We have several films made by uh, women directors, close to 20, in fact. And um, we have several films in English as well. So join us and watch the films. With us today is the director of the film, Womb, Women of My Billion. Uh, director's name is Ajitesh Sharma. Thank you for being here, Ajitesh. Thank and you. Uh, the protagonist of the film, the activist, the champion of our women, a whole billion of them, is Srishti Bakshi to join me in welcoming her. Welcome, Srishti. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us here today. For our uh, viewers who have not seen the film, this is a film that must be viewed by every man and by every woman and by all women. Now, Srishti Bakshi, she embarked on a 3,800 kilometer journey all the way from the southern tip of India, Kanyakumari, to Srinagar, the northernmost state um, city, large city in India. And she did this on foot over 230 days with just one goal. And the goal was to raise awareness of the rising tide of violence against women in India and really to empower women. And she did this by going through schools, going to villages, uh, talking to people along her journey, um, stopping at, at small towns and big, large towns and really uh, mobilizing women to understand that they could indeed be empowered. Now, um, this is almost 4,000 kilometers in 240 days. And so this film is going to give you a lot of her firsthand experiences, as well as um, a look into the lives of some of these women um, you know, they're going to talk to you about uh, their journey. And uh, I, I'm sure this is going to touch a chord with you as it did with me and with all women everywhere, irrespective of the country. This is not just India's story. This is a woman's story. It is a global women's story. And with that, I want to say, welcome again, both of you. Thank you. Such a lovely introduction. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, movie really, um, really touched a chord. Um, you know, I know I'm of a different generation, um, but in spite of that, uh, this is something I strongly believed in. This is something that I live every day. You know, I, I still have my maiden name. My kids have my maiden name. And, uh, you know, I think it's time for women to stand up and, and, and take back their power. And I think you did just that. So I'm so proud of you. Um, I have a question for you. I want you, Srishti, to think back, um, think back at the time when you said, I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. I am going to do this. What was that moment like? And when did that happen? And could you just talk about Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's so clear in my mind in terms of, um, I think the world never let me forget that moment because uh, yeah. it, uh, it, it basically, um, that activist is in every individual who probably comes across the story. Um, I always say that I might be the face of this movement, but there is an army of people behind me and each of them are as much a part of this, uh, of this journey, of this movement as much as, much as I am. Uh, because, uh, you know, all of us came together on a mission, actually. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I very clearly remember that moment when I decided to do this. I was in Hong Kong um, mm -hmm. and I was in a, a, in, a, in a place where I was interacting with a lot of different people from different nationalities. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, sometimes I would be the only Indian on the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, the conversations would always start with India is such a fascinating country. It's so beautiful. We would like to visit. And then it will always uh, kind of, you know, take a U-turn and talk about the safety of women in our country. Mm -hmm. um, I am an army officer's daughter. I am a patriot. 
and I've been raised as one. So this would hurt me uh, in terms of why my country is seen in such light every time. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was at the back of my head. And uh, of course, I, I was very, uh, uh, you know, I was consuming a lot of news from the country. Uh, and no matter what, uh, somewhere, some news about some kind of violence inflicted on a woman would reach me. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time it did, I would take to the keyboard and express my anger and you know how we all like obviously put out on social media in terms of what mm -hmm. our thoughts yeah. our opinions are yeah. and I do I did that I so I, I count myself as an armchair activist for the longest time in my life and then came a day like when me. I came across <laughs> uh, every one of us like every one of us have uh, that uh, you know uh, kind of thought process that we want to participate and we want to do it and, and that's how we do. Um, and then came a time when I came across the Highway 91 case where a mother and a daughter were gang raped on a highway in front of the father. And I think it was the way the article was written or what, I don't know what state of mind I was in at that time, but I lost my balance. Uh, I felt extremely um, sad, upset. Uh, I felt uh, a sense of failure in a way and and that brought me to to have open discussions with people around me and mm -hmm. my network so um, my network was by that time in places of uh, important positions in different mm -hmm. corporates in in the government mm -hmm. and whenever I would try to discuss it everybody would have this very hopeless kind of an attitude saying that yeah this is very common it's um, it's very sad and uh, <laughs> a typical like you know a sense of uh, this is never going to change and how lucky are you that you're not in the country and you've moved uh, for the longest time i think i was uh, uh, bothered by any news article that came that i came across which was focusing on uh, violence against women mm -hmm. uh, i would take to the keyboard uh, vent my anger share my opinion with the world and then move mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. uh, until one day when I was in Hong Kong and I came across this news article about Highway 91, uh, where a mother and a daughter were gang raped in front of the father. Oh. And I think that day was uh, absolutely, uh, you know, something which I, I clearly remember. It, it was a day when I lost my balance. I felt uh, deeply hurt and failed mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, I have grown up to love my country. My father's in the army and uh, we've been raised patriots. So uh, this entire news article just reminded me of, of what was wrong with the world, what was wrong and, and absolutely horrific happening in India. So I, I, I went back home and I started just, you know, making a few calls uh, to my network. Mm -hmm. uh, at this time, my network was placed at very uh, prominent positions in the corporate world or in the government. And time and again, the only answer that I could get from my network was that um, and uh, this is very normal and it was it was something that did, didn't bother people at all and that I think bothered me even more that here is a 13 year old girl whose life has changed forever and uh, no one wants to bat an eyelid to what has happened to her no one cares so that is the moment when I decided that I think uh, I would have failed my father if I didn't do something about this um, and I I started just brainstorming with my husband uh, on what 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 could I do, what different things could I do, um, and there several days after is when I decided that okay I'm going to take up a journey in India mm -hmm. because I wanted to meet these women I wanted to talk to them the least I could do was talk to them uh, and understand this violence uh, this journey was not aimed at uh, like you know um, it was not a morcha that stop violence or like it wasn't aimed at mm -hmm. um, that we will change the world or change this reality for women. It was aimed at understanding the reality on the mm -hmm. ground. Mm -hmm. um, it is very different uh, from reading a news article about what is happening on the ground mm -hmm. to actually facing women and facing people who have faced this. So, um, so that is what I, I ventured out to do. Mm -hmm. I packed my bags and I came back to India and I decided to walk across the country. Sometimes uh, it feels like when you're very angry, people say that, you know, you must go for, out for a walk and just calm yourself yeah. down. 
I think I just took, took a very, very long walk. Wow, you just took a very, very long walk. And um, reflecting on your answer, um, India is such a diverse country and uh, you traverse the entire length of the country, right? <clears throat> Did you see differences in the way women were treated in different parts as you, as you went on your march? Um, no. Um, the language of violence is, uh, is very similar across the whole world. What happens behind those four walls in any house uh, is the same be it uh, America or India or the, uh, or the UK. Um, and, and similar, you know, experience was on the road for us because every state uh, mm -hmm. was different in terms of how, um, how educated they were, how much wealth there was in the, in the state, but the, the violence stayed consistent. It was mm -hmm. happening across the strata and across uh, the country. So you saw that at at <clears throat> at all economic levels, not just yeah, levels. because you know people actually make the make a mistake of thinking that uh, agar education is something that uh, will eradicate this problem or um, maybe wealth will. Uh, but that's not true. We have seen mansions where women are still poor because they don't have access to any um, finances. They might be living a very lavish life but uh, probably facing the same kind of violence that a woman with an alcoholic husband does every evening in a village. Um, or educated households. It's, the, it, it's yeah. basically because, because it doesn't depend on education and it doesn't depend on wealth. It depends on the mindset. That's what we figured, like find, found out on the ground. Uh, a person in a village, a woman in a village could be very well celebrated and respected and have all the happiness in the world but lives in a small hut um, comparatively to a woman in the city who might be holding a corporate job in a very prominent position, but goes back to a home where uh, she's scared and every day lives her life in fear. That, that, that is so I think the, the difference is uh, of oppression, how the intensity of oppression. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that is, I think I, what I felt is the main difference in rural and urban places in India. Oh, that's very well said, Ajitesh. Um, uh, you know, I really commend uh, you, Ajitesh, uh, for your commitment to this uh, project because it meant 235 days of not doing anything else but being on this project, um, dedicated to the betterment of our sisters. And uh, I thank you for that. Tell me, what was that decision like for you? And, and, um, and also uh, tell us a bit about yourself, um, you know, in terms of the film world. Yeah, so, uh, so I was never walking with Sishti. I didn't walk with her. In fact, I met Sishti when I was working on a different project in Delhi and she was crossing Delhi. I was working with Apurva on uh, Delhi Crime. I was an assistant director on Delhi Crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, Srishti was crossing Delhi on a journey and she came to our hotel and Apurva introduced us to Srishti and her team. And like everybody else, I was also uh, in awe. I was blown away. Uh, uh, okay. Firstly, because there was somebody who was literally walking the length of the country. And second, obviously the cause. Mm -hmm. So, and Srishti had a camera team that was uh, every day documenting. They were documenting women, interviews of women for their own research purposes and future. Mm -hmm. So when Sushti left uh, for Kashmir and we stayed back for, we, uh, we finished shooting for Delhi crime. But mm -hmm. uh, the thought didn't leave my head. Uh, I, was, I kept thinking about the movement. I kept thinking about Sushti and the walk. And I used to constantly speak to Monisha and Apurva. Monisha is our executive producer. And mm -hmm. uh, I used to get these ideas that uh, there can be a film, there can be a series, and it's important, it, it can amplify the movement. And yeah, so one fine day uh, after Sishti finished her journey, she came to Bombay with some nine hard drives uh, and 1000 hours of footage. <laughs> and she just like, she gave it to me and just she just left, she left and then she said, make a film out of it. 
<laughs> so yeah, that's how my journey began with uh, Sisti and Boom. Uh, because it took me some four months to only watch uh, her journey from day one to two thirty, and uh, I used to just wake up, spend my day uh, watching the footage, interviews of women, understand uh, what's happening, and then mm-hmm. sleep, and then do the same thing again. Mm-hmm. Of course, there were there were challenges for me as well because there was no grammar to the footage. It was literally coverage because there was no director walking with her. So there was no grammar. There was no pattern. To the footage. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So after I finished watching the film, I sat down and I wrote a script. Mm. I started imagining mm. uh, myself walking with Sushi, and I was just imagining how would I have. Shot the film, and uh, yeah, I narrated the script to Sustain Abura, and that's how everything was. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the the one thing that um, sort of puzzled me, and yet it didn't, was um, the language that was captured was always Hindi, even though you probably traveled through about twelve languages in your journey. Uh, 12 major, maybe major languages, yeah. So I, I was curious about that because I, you know, at one point I thought you were still in Madurai or in Tamil Nadu, but the language was Hindi. Was that a conscious decision? Um, so I only speak Hindi and English. Yeah. Um, and so my workshops were uh, in the South, mainly in English, where we could have uh, conducted them in English. Otherwise, we had a translator uh, with us to translate it to obviously uh, in, women in the villages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, also up until uh, Bangalore, we were, uh, we were in the South Belt and uh, there was a heavy use of obviously Southern languages, uh, but also the film uh, crew at that time was very invested in documentation of the, of the uh, journey. Mm-hmm. So I think there was a, a there was a sort of like a, you know how talent keeps you know, joining you in this journey. Yeah, uh, Apurva at the at that moment uh, really got the team together and uh, added more people. I see. And after Bangalore, we had a, a number of people join us who also then uh, kind of got the got a wider footage of uh, how the movement was being conducted and progressing. Uh, and after Bangalore, we were in the Hindi belt since Indeed. Telangana. After we so in Tamil Nadu, the women who were portrayed, who were telling their story, they were not Indian women, were they? No, no, no. They were. They, there there is a okay. yeah. There, there, there is there, Tamil. There, there are parts. There are parts in workshops also where women are talking in Tamil. In Tamil, in Tamil yeah. Tamil. yeah. Yes. So, that's what we established also. I mean, in, in the beginning only the montage established. Yeah, that's always tough uh, as you, um, you know, uh, breaking through the language barriers in each state, isn't it? So you did uh, remarkably well. Um, I was curious too, do you keep in touch uh, with the lady who decided to go back to her husband after all that uh, he was doing to her? Um, you're talking about the about Lakshmi, Lakshmi. who opens, yes, the, who opens the movie. The, yes. Um, uh, we did get back in touch with her when we were in the area and uh, beyond. Uh, but then, um, you know, you can only intervene to yeah. a certain degree mm-hmm. and uh, and try to counsel and mm-hmm. offer help. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when when she decided to go back, she was very clear that she this is her decision and this is what she wants to do. No mm-hmm. matter, uh, you know, how much of police involvement or the uh, commission, which is the you know, women commission of the state, mm-hmm. their involvement, uh, it didn't matter at mm-hmm. that point in time. And mm-hmm. this is a ground reality, which happens to many, many women in the country. So um, yeah, they indeed. have access, but they are not able to have the confidence to, to uh, walk out of sure, right. an abusive household. And societal so, pressure is so much, right? The men were absolutely. laughing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, it's a ground reality, and I think it will uh, change over time with more exposure, mm-hmm. with the um, amount of, uh, you know, internet access that young girls have, mm-hmm. because they are going to be probably uh, facing yeah. a, a similar situation. I think, I think at that moment probably we will have greater number of women walking out of abusive households, 
Um, but at the moment, uh, it is a ground reality for many, many women in the country. Wow. And also, I'd like to I'd like to add to it. Uh, yes, sir, uh, as I mean, as for my conversation with Sushi in initial days, I remember discussing this topic clearly. That why would she not leave her husband's house? And uh, the and Sushi clearly told me, and that was I I I think we all will agree to it that. she does she is not independent financially she lives with her husband at husband's house mm -hmm. so if she decides to leave that means that she'll have to leave that house she'll have to find a place to live mm -hmm. plus she'll need for money where will that come from which is never worked outside the house so i think this is one of the major reasons and i mean when we talk about women empowerment and everything but yeah i mean uh, nobody talks about financial independence Uh, for a uh, woman coming from uh, that sector because mm -hmm. they really can't do anything uh, every night she's getting beaten up and next morning things are normal because yeah like, that's how it's a shame it seems like a shame but it is i think the story of uh, women everywhere even here in this country you know if they don't have access to finances uh, it makes it very hard for them to then be independent um and you know this this like like i said is the story of every woman uh, across the globe um and it's because of patriarchy so what do you think enables this patriarchy uh, to happen why is that so because even in our own country here in the united states if it were not for the war uh, women would never have joined uh, the workforce you know they joined the workforce because of the war um and uh, now women are part of the workforce but even so you know women as as we know globally are historically paid less in the united states and roles seem to be so well defined even in this society you know um so what do you think is the reason for this patriarchy um this is it i think it gets passed on from generation to generation it's a gift uh an unwanted gift actually uh by everyone we um kind of touch upon it uh in the documentary as well when we do this one activity on how uh an individual observes uh, a woman and um you know the words associated with the woman and the words associated with the with the man um there itself you will be able to understand uh, no matter if it was a crowd in a village or it was crowd in a school in a very premium international school or in corporate um things like strong and uh, you know financial independence everything associated with men and demure coy uh, multitasker mother everything was was with the women so um but but these are the differences that have that have been given to us by society uh, we were born born pretty equal with very minor differences as a man and a woman um so i think uh, this this consistent uh, you know system of patriarchy oppressing the women mm -hmm. is uh, is like you said true that it is world over mm -hmm. and uh, people have to what they have to do is actually just stop and think uh, about every situation a little differently mm -hmm. um and when you start questioning these uh, uh you know uh, things which which are very very blatantly gendered is when you start realizing the the kind of uh, uh, exposure differences that mm -hmm. you have been uh, your childhood has uh, you know made you uh, experience so uh, it's it's and i very openly also you know say it in my workshops that that people think that i was probably in a very very gender equal home and that is why probably i am able to you know make these decisions independently like just decision making yeah. right and it's um, not but that's not true yeah, yeah that's not true i my mother uh, definitely i remember her telling me you must know how to uh, make tea you must know how to cook but i have i have one of the best like uh, parents in terms of uh, their the, the amount of support that they have extended to yes. both their daughters yeah. to pursue their dreams and think independently but mm -hmm. because my mother my mother's mother which is like my nani or my grandmother she also kind of gave these things of like you know gender stereotypes 
to my mother and then she passed it on to us but yeah. today is a time when i can look back and reflect back when i'm raising my son today uh, in terms of how to raise him uh, as a person who really thinks about uh, the opposite gender in an equal way mm-hmm. i think that kind of conscious society and woke culture is is what is required mm-hmm. to smash patriarchy um and it there is still we have to be patient because it is again like i said it's a mindset change yeah uh, it is the hardest thing to do uh, but i think there are a lot of people initiatives um and things out there which are happening uh, for the good and mm-hmm. and which will there will be a, a world one day probably not in my lifetime um uh, but there will be a gender equal world one day well thank you thank you abhitesh and thank you shrishti um for this wonderful opportunity um to talk to you for our audience to hear you and uh, for everything that you've done i mean this is so powerful and this is a message that must be told to everyone every man and all women thank you so much for being here with us today i i really really appreciate it thank you thank you thank, thank you, you for having thank us. you so much